Who doesn't want to believe that there's one person who could come and save us from ourselves? Remember, remember the 5th of November. Blair, what are you doing? I'm V, V for Vendetta, it's Guy Fox Day. <sighs> okay, I got an advanced copy of Man of Steel Blu-ray that we're giving away this week and I'm watching some of the special features, so go away. Oh, the one that doesn't come out till November 12th? Okay, switch it back, I wanna see that. Okay, I can't. How do you even interrupt a Blu-ray signal? So Teen Titans Go! is the third Teen Titans television show. Why this style? At the end of the day, you have five characters that people love. Comic book fans, uh, non-comic book fans. And we were just trying to take those characters and put them into an environment and situations that uh, would appeal to a younger fan base. So, you know, to do that, comedy makes the most sense. How much of the story do you actually pull from the comic books? A lot of the people who work on the show are fans. So they draw from the comic books and put little Easter eggs into the show. Mostly we're trying to appeal to uh, kids 6 to 11 who haven't yet had their first experience. So we're hoping that this show is the, the, the platform that gets kids into comic books. All right, last question. What should we look forward to coming up on the show? The Teen Titans are gonna be going inside the Batcave on a future episode. Right, I mean, because Robin is Batman's heir, essentially, and he goes to the Batcave with, with very serious intent, and he wants to take his whole mission seriously. And then all his dumb friends show up, and they all just want to, like, have a party in the place. Teen Titans uh, playing with all his toys, the Battering, the Batmobile, the... The other thing. The other thing, yeah. that's Bat name. Right, and it's a total bummer for him, but it's not a bummer for them. Okay, so I know that you're super busy, but first, I definitely want to talk about Green Arrow. Um, I hear that you're actually introducing Diggle from the TV show Arrow into the original comic book series. Yeah, it's really exciting to be introduced to him last month as a, as a character in the DC Universe now, and the actor, David Ramsey, was really excited about it too, so that was great. Okay, so what can we all expect from issue 25? We kind of flash back to an earlier point in uh, Green Arrow's career. He returns to Seattle to find out that his mother was in Gotham City on business when the blackout hit. So he goes to rescue her, and there, Green Arrow, or a prototype version of Green Arrow, meets Batman for the first time. And you also write that awesomely trippy sci fi romance, Everything Under the Sun Trillium. Yeah, I write and draw that book for Vertigo. It's uh, two narratives. One follows a scientist, a woman in the far future, and the other one follows an explorer in 1821 and uh, through mysterious means in our first issue the two characters meet and the two timelines start to, to bleed together and it turns into a big sprawling cosmic sci-fi love story. Awesome. Kevin, 99 episodes of Mad on Cartoon Network. Was there ever discussion at all about leaving it at 99, not doing 100 for the fans? Every day. We thought, like, The Sopranos, <laughs> we'll show the open and then go black, and, you know, a lot of Journey music, and just leave it at that for the fans. I love that. So you guys do have the 100th episode airing on yes, November 11th. November 11th. Big milestone for you guys. Yeah. What should we be looking out for in this episode? Well, you know what? If you've watched Mad, you know if you've seen 100 episodes packed with parodies and superheroes and ridiculousness. So we're just doubling that, because it's a 22-minute special. Well, congratulations on 100, sir. Thank you. Appreciate the Thank conversation. You. I'll see you later. Well, 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 I didn't come all the way here. The DC office is without an exclusive okay. clip, right? All right. Let's take a look at that. All right. Superheroes. They're just like us. They fill their tank up with gas. Are you crazy? Relax. It's my invisible jet. Hmm. Or is that it? They fly. Uh, you both know this is an exit row, right? Uh, you know, I love the extra leg room, but hate the added responsibility. I feel like there's so many Easter eggs in this office, but what's your favorite thing in here? I don't know. You know, I like the crazy stuff. The Batman marionette kind of freaks me out, okay. um, but the Joker dartboard is one of my favorite pieces. Sometimes when you're having a really bad meeting, I wear the Joker mask when I'm wearing it just to really throw people off in the process of meeting. <laughs> so when the pitch came in for Batman Eternal, did you have that Joker mask on? No, no, actually no. <laughs> we were all set to go, and we're really excited about that book. Scott Snyder's in charge, and it's working with James Tynion, and working with guys who've been the, the Batman team for the last couple of years. They looked at a lot of the aspects of where we do things with Batman. Yep. They found an interesting new interpretation of things that were very common and familiar with within Batman. So even though with a lot of familiar pieces coming back to the book, I think they're gonna be shown in a new and exciting direction. But we, we have all the weeklies planned. So the, the good ah! thing is that- <laughs> Okay, so since this is DC All Access and you have other weeklies planned, yeah. is there any kind of like little hints you can give Well, me? the hints on the wall, it's right there. If you shake a picture on my wall, it's all there. The big push for us right now Batman's gonna be hitting 75 just the same way Superman hit 75 this year. 
So we're starting January with Detective 27. Issue number 27 was Batman's very first appearance. So the fact that we relaunched the line, restarted Detective number one, and then all of a sudden, Detective 27 falls in the year that Batman hits his 75th birthday. So I think that's pretty exciting. So yeah. we decided to make that issue a special issue. And then also just to add just a little more, you know. Just to uh, make it a little cooler as if it's not already amazing. Yeah, to add a little more icing on the cake, we reached out and we're very happy to say that, uh, that Frank Miller is going to be providing a double page spread, which is his first work drawing Batman in the last 10 years. So I'm really excited about that. I've been talking to I like haven't heard anything you've been saying yeah. in the last five seconds because I'm like still on. Yeah, no, it's, it was so great because you know, he still has that real interest. He's still a comic fan at heart. And we told him what we were doing and the fact that it was Detective 27, you know, he wanted to participate. And that's an interesting thing because there's so many great companies out there and so many places for, for creators and talent to work. But as I always like to say, and we can say with the level of pride, this is the only place you can come to write Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. It's true. <laughs> it's true. I'm here at Kamikaze and I got my hands on some exclusive pages from Forever Evil 3. And I figure the best way to show them to you guys will be to have cosplayers act out the panels. I've made it my mission on Earth to destroy those who would enslave it. So you said Black Adam, yet still, here I am. Shazam! You're trying to hurt me with words? No more words from you. Is this the end for Black Adam? Find out in Forever Evil number three in stores November 6th. Hey, looking good, T. Smith. Don't I know it. Yeah. So does that mean that I win the lanterns because I have the best DC costume? You do look great, but another fan won the lanterns. They just have to click on this link right here to find out one. No! And speaking of giving stuff away, we're actually giving away a sweet Man of Steel bundle to the fan that sees this Lego Jor-El right here in the episode. Yeah, that's right. It's got uh, the Blu-ray of the movie and a sweet Lego set. No! Feel better after that? Feeling just a little bit better. Okay, good. But guess what? It's because what? I get to go to the Man of Steel live streaming event on the 9th. Guess who's gonna be there? Henry Cavill, Zack Snyder, and Amy Adams. No! I'm jealous.